today we shall discuss an important topic uh, which is uh, pitting corrosion. Uh, pitting corrosion of metals is uh, it can cause a severe damage to the structural integrity because the rate of corrosion in the pit can be uh, very high it can be about uh, a million times higher corrosion rates as compared to the surrounding matrix. So, the pitting corrosion is uh, is very insidious. can cause accelerated corrosion. Uh, the localized areas of a metallic component. Uh, it can ultimately can lead to perforation it can be a leak sometimes the pit can act as as uh, initiator for uh, say stress corrosion cracking it can be initiated for simple fatigue or it can be even corrosion fatigue. You know the reason because when you have a pit which is very localized, it can be a stress riser, you know, the stress intensity at that location can be quite high, and so the crack can initiate and grow even below the yield point of a metal. So, pit is is, is in fact is very detrimental can bring down the component life quite significantly leading to premature failures. I just want to show some illustrations how this pit can really look like. I do not know how clear it is to you, it is a, a long shot and um, taken on a you know, facade you know, this is stainless steel this is you can see that there is a stainless steel here right. You can see here is a stainless steel and you see some fine dots appearing right. And these fine dots are uh, actually pits. And these pits appeared within about 6 months to 1 year of um, commissioning of this particular structure because it was uh, at the sea front. And the sea front you know that you have a lot of uh, chlorides being carried uh, by the wind and the chlorides deposit on this stainless steel uh, structure that leads to uh, pitting corrosion. And um, this is a this is a, it's a, it's a civil engineering structure you know it is 
you would in the same location you would see here here slightly better I suppose you can able to see a pit here right you can able to see a pit around here and a pit around here and you see pits here right. So, and of course, you have tiny pits some, somewhere around here you can see lots of tiny pits which are visible to the naked eye ok. And again it is a 316 uh, stainless steel you could see the pitting happening within 6 months to 1 year ok. They become very severe where they were welded. Mm. See that here, right? Yeah, right. I hope you were able to see this reddish brown spots. Okay, these spots they do correspond to severe pitting. Two kinds of problems here. One is the loss in the structural integrity. Otherwise, the cosmetic appearance of the stainless steels. Right, you have already this brown color, and especially uh, you are talking about you know um, household appliances or the facades uh, of a house, and uh, you know, which are so which are all can cause uh, you know, uh, you know, can appearances which are not really acceptable. Now, these are all macroscopic view of the pits, right, and if you see uh, in the microscope sometimes these pits appear to start with the microscopic levels actually. You, you guys are all know right you have done uh, already you know earlier we have seen that what is polarization and uh, how the polarization of uh, passivating metals look like when you analytically polarize you get a passive region and you rise the potential further you get into pitting regions ok. And if you look at the samples after the analytic polarization and you see a very microscopic pits here ok. You see these pits are very microscopic natures. And many of them are all uh, hemispherical in natures ok. That is how the pit starts actually ok. In fact, the pit could start at the at the sub microscopic level actually the sub microscopic means less than 1 micron actually can happen. So, this these are the kind of pits happened in the case of a stainless steel which is 304 L stainless steels and uh, uh, this stainless steel was um, uh, you know plasma ion implantation technique ok, uh, where you uh, implanted nitrogen in the the stainless steel and you can see here that um, it is untreated right and treated with with um, with the nitrogen and you can see that the the, the, the number of the depth of it here is, is reduced as compared to over here. So, in this case the nitrogen addition has improved but of course, uh, the treatment was done at different temperatures at a higher temperature you can see that the pits uh, become more. Essentially this is a, a, a PhD work ok, wherein they converted the surface uh, so that it can have higher pitting resistance and higher passivation. In that case uh, they have added nitrogen by plasma source ion implantation or also called as plasma ion you know, plasma immersion ion implantation technique ok. Uh, so, essentially I want to show that these are all can be microscopic you can start with it can be even sub microscopic levels these pits start and then they grow and uh, and uh, uh, you know they can start damaging. Sometimes the pit also can have a, a very complex morphologies uh, we will see later actually you can see here these pits uh, these are all corresponding to a, a stainless steel where nickel was uh, substituted with the manganese right. And why why people substitute um, nickel with the manganese because the manganese is cheaper and also it can stabilize the austenitic phase. 
So, it is it is it is a it is a an equivalent of a 304 uh, stainless steel, but uh, very low nickel content with more manganese content. You see here the pitting behavior is, is quite severe you know. See this is see compare these two now you know and you just see this uh, the left side corresponds to the the manganese substituted one actually you replace nickel with that it is kind of nickel now the, the one with the nickel is certainly far better compared with the one replaced uh, by manganese actually. Now, as I told you the pits can be very uh, very complex uh, you know depending upon the, the microstructures you know. Um, so, this is a slightly um, you know uh, irregular morphology of the pit that you see here ok and this is essentially uh, is a, is a composite right. It is a it is a A356 uh, aluminum alloy actually wherein you add silicon carbide uh, particles are added is essentially used for the rotor disc you know for the for the for the uh, automobile applications you know the, you know the brake um, disc actually you know is is normally made up of cast ions but cast ions are very very high density so they uh, they want to substitute with uh, with aluminum but then aluminum is, uh, suffers very high severe uh, I would say um, where uh, you know where problems. So, what I what happens is they add it with they add it with, uh, with silicon carbide the silicon carbide gives you good reinforcement and so the wear resistance now. So, you can see that the, the pits uh, are uh, more complex it is takes the contour of some of these silicon carbides ok. Look at this shape of this this follows the contour of the silicon carbide particles. So, we can we can have a pit which can be irregular pit based on the microstructure of the material actually. That means, the metallurgy also plays a very important role um, in pitting of the stainless uh, pitting of the steels uh, and uh, other alloys. So, so what we look like to say is that the pit can start at microscopic and sub microscopic level then grow and then perforate. The structures that is why they are quite deleterious. Look at this corrosion at the microscopic level right. That means, there is no significant change in the weight change in the mass of the structures. So, there is going to be no significant change in the mass of metallic structure. In pitting corrosion So, the, the test like mass loss test has no meaning right and um, why does it really originate pitting. Um, there are a lot of studies uh, you know there are probably hundreds of papers which are devoted to understand the pitting mechanism, pitting characteristics and so on and I do not think we have now the last word in understanding the pitting mechanism so far. Of course, a significant progress has happened in understanding pitting corrosion, but still there are several steps of pitting we do not still understand. In this course, um, 
I am going to be a little brief because it is a first course and we will not go into too much of science of the pitting corrosion. But however, if you are really interested to know to more uh, you know I would recommend strongly this article by G S Frankel you know. This article is um, it is a review. And it is published in um, Journal of the Electrochemical Society. It's a it's a very good review. Okay, uh, it it covers quite a bit of fundamentals of um, pitting corrosion. To start with, can pitting occur in all cases? in all corrosion system. The answer for that is it happens only in the passive system in the passive metals. If the metals do not passivate, there would be no pitting. Passivation is an important criteria. First, the second, you need aggressive anions. you need aggressive anions. So, even when the metal is passive, it may not pit unless there are specific aggressive anions ok. I give some examples. What are the metals you know of uh, which are passivating in wide environment? Yeah, stainless steels. Yes. Yeah. Then aluminum. Titanium. And its alloys. There are so many other metals, right? You have, for example, you can have tantalum, you know, zirconium, you know, there are several metals which are passivating. It is also possible that you can passivate even pure iron and a given pH conditions, right? You have seen the put bed diagram. It is not necessary that you know the stainless stainless steel can passivate in all cases not necessarily, but predominantly yes 
from the engineering point of view these metals they exhibit passivations. Now, all of them they are they can undergo feeding they can undergo feeding ok. For example, stainless steels fit in chloride media. So, as aluminum titanium chlorides at ambient temperatures no. No, at high temperatures yes. But you can have like bromide, for example, you can fit. So, passivation is an important criteria for pitting to occur ok and predominantly these metals they suffer uh, pitting depending upon how severe the environment is and, and what kind of when I say environment it means the temperatures it means the nature of uh, the, the anions that we we, we think about and both are included. As I told you pitting corrosion is not so far um, well understood. Now, if you if you take a let us say if you consider a, a polarization curve. you if you know of this this is very familiar to you right and this is the potential we call them as the pit are also called as yes pitting potentials okay. now if you look at the voltage here let us say a typically a, th a 316 stainless steel in chloride medium maybe the E pit could be about uh, plus 200 millivolts versus saturated calum electrode right pitting potential in let us say 3.5 weight percent NaCl solution. But actually, if you look at the driving force for pitting, it is very enormous. Now, what is this potential? This potential is is with respect to the solution, right? The potential of the metal with respect to the solution as measured by a reference electrode. In this case, a saturated calum electrode. So, I am measuring the potential of this metal in relation to the solution. So, 200 millivolt, but if you look at the film thickness when I say film thickness I mean the passive film thickness right they are in the in the order of nanometers. The metal is highly conducting this film you can consider as approximately you can say is insulating. Or you may consider as a semiconducting in both you know. Okay. 
So, it is a barrier for the flow of the current is it not when I apply a voltage the current is not rising the current remains steady state here this is called a passive current density right this is uh, this is your I p passive current density because it is the film is offering a barrier resistance, but if the film thickness is in nanometers and even you apply let us say 0 0.2 volt what is the field across the film? The field across the film turns out to be about 10 power 6 to 10 power 7 volt per centimeter. What is the field voltage by the distance or with the voltage is applied right. Now, look at this here. So, it is a very high field that means the metal is about to have an electrical breakdown right an electrical breakdown can happen right. So, it is in the threshold of of the electrical breakdown one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is the passive current density is of the order of what? It is of the order of 10 power um, minus 6 to 10 power minus 7 amperes centimeter square. But if you look at the active metal dissolution, at the bad surface, surface it is about 1 to 10 amperes per centimeter square. Do you understand this? You understand this concept? Okay. The passive condensity at these locations, right? You measure it, they are all in terms of micro amperes. If the film breaks and if you expose the bare metal, the current density over here is the order of amperes 1 ampere to 10 amperes per centimeter square right. So, how many times the metal corrodes here as compared to the corrosion of the metals in the passive state? How many times it is about 10 power 6 is about a million times corroding at higher rate. So, if you look at the film breakdown if the due to some reasons the dissolution at that location becomes very severe the rate of corrosion can be of the order of 10 power 6, 10 power 5 depending upon to what extent the bad metal is exposed. So, the spitting corrosion becomes very, very severe, very, very insidious and it happens at the microscopic level. I hope I have conveyed the points uh, clearly to you to understand here ok. So, this is a, a very important type of uh, failure that is why a lot of work has gone lot of research has gone to understand the pitting corrosion of metals. Now, let us look at the pitting. What it consists of? It consists of passive film breakdown, then we call it as 
metastable pitting third we call it as a stable pitting let me explain to you what do i mean by these three events ok. These are the three events simplified events of pitting corrosion. The passive film breakdown. Now, let us take the, the case 1. Now, what do you mean by a passive state? What do you mean by so what is happening in a passive metal? You get a definite passive current density, there is a film formation, but even then there is a definite current flowing across the film. So, there is a metal dissolution, it is not that there is no metal dissolution, the metal dissolves, but dissolves at a lower rate. So, the passivity is a, is a dynamic process. of film breakdown and passivation. It continuously happens right. The only thing is the rate of uh, you know uh, uh, repassivation or whatever. I, and you can call it repassivation. You use the term repassivation, may be more appropriate. Okay, so um, so if we can quickly heal, then the current comes down. Okay, now they are all happening at a at nano levels. I want to say nano. We talk about spatial, right? Nanoscopic levels. Spatially, they occur at the atomic and the nano levels the metal the atoms dissolve and uh, there is repassivation uh, are taking place. But what can happen is if if you rise the potential the potential is is increased if the potential is increased or if some aggressive anions are present, film breakdown dominates. you may call this as initiation. As I told you the initiation process is still less understood. The film is getting damaged, the film is getting broken actually ok. The bare metal is exposed. When it is exposed, Then what happens? It leads to metastable pit. You know what? The, what do you mean by metastable? Anybody? It is between a stable and unstable state, right? A stable state and an unstable state. In between, the state is called as a metastable state. It can again, it can either go to a stable state or you can move to a unstable state that is called a metastable state ok. In the metastable period what happens? The damage is quite visible.
So, what do you what do you mean by that? If you normally observe the anodic polarization curves of let us say stainless steel, you may aluminum alloys, some cases even titanium alloys, you start from the E car, right? This is your E car, ok, and you rise the potential, you go to the critical condensity, then passive state current apparently looks very stable current right. When you start increasing the current starts fluctuating and this is called as metastable player. Why I call a metastable here? The pits are visible. Pits are visible to a microscope, right? you just see them in the microscope, they can be a 1 micron or you know half a micron visible, right. As opposed to the film breakdown, right, as opposed to film breakdown, that is initiation process. no visible change is seen. You do not see them anything right. In the in other cases you see that that the dynamic process of metal dissolution and then repassivation taking place and see them in the microscope you would not see any features, but over here you observe in the microscope you see microscopic size pits appearing, disappearing, appearing and disappearing. That means, what it becomes truly metastable and some of these pits may become stable later right. So, you see a metastable pit here ok, which are observable in the microscope and this metastable pits pits or microscopic in nature ok. Some of them becoming stable pit. ok and many of them Repassivate. It goes to the original state of passivity. Now, what does it mean? You when you start moving from the corrosion potentials up towards the noble side, ok, noble side, you see the current start fluctuating and then the current becomes here. You see here what happens? Here the current is steadily increasing. And this is becomes a stable pit. At this particular potential, it means a stable pit. So called E pit you describe is nothing but the pit that forms become stable, ok. The pit does not disappear above that particular potentials. At E pit and above, the chances of the pit remaining stable is very high below the pit the chances of pitting becoming stable become less. In fact, it becomes less as you start moving down from here or so to say it is possible to have a pit even at this particular place 
over here, over here, over here. But what, what does really mean in real terms? The real in, in real terms, the probability of the pit that is formed here becoming stable is so less compared to the probability of the pit so formed becoming stable. So, this probability is quite large here as compared to this. That means, the concept of E pit becoming a unique number is not correct. The pitting can occur below the pitting potential as well. At E pit and above for sure the pitting will take place. Hope I am not I am making the point clear to you. So, the, the, the concept of saying that E pit corresponds to pit initiation is, is a little bit you know not a right terminology to use. All we can say is that yes the pit will start stabilizing at that particular potentials ok. I hope I am I am clear to you actually am I clear ok. So, this is something very important to look at it. In fact, this has led to some concept of what is called as induction time. Actually, uh, just to make some remarks, I would say pitting corrosion, pitting tendency, I would say, is a function of applied potentials, the chloride or anion concentration, then the time which is going to be the factors ok. E where here E is applied potential chloride is the uh, air concentration of chloride or other anions time is the time of exposure. Now, um, if you take for example, let us draw this uh, diagram of polarization curve. Suppose like this, okay. Suppose you take these places, these points, suppose you take and I hold the sample at that particular potential time versus um, the, the current log i you can call it ok log i current. If I hold at potential uh, corresponding to the point D, the current increases D here. See what happens? This is your let us say this is your I p, this current is the base current is I p here. Here what happens? The current will remain here and then this is going to be C, uh, C, this is going to be B, it is going to be A here. The increase in current corresponds to the pitting of, of the of the metal. This is given some you know gross schematic here ok. 
I do not worry about the values, just look at the, the relative positions of these um, uh, you know current versus uh, time curves. So, what does it mean? If you are going to hold it at D, the pit starts immediately, it does not take more time. If you hold it, if you reduce the potentials, it takes longer time and and so on B and, and so as uh, A right. So, which means that the chances of a metal pitting in an environment um, you know it depends on what? It depends upon not only the potentials also the time factors ok. So, this is something you should be looking at actually. Um, so, now the pit becomes a stable right. What makes a transition from metastable to stable pit? A here the there is a lot of similarity between a crevice corrosion and a pitting corrosion here ok. what makes the pit stable right. The pit can repassivate, that means it can form the film, that means the pit becomes unstable, or the pit will continue to dissolve and grow, that means the pit becomes stable, right. So, so what makes this pit stable? Now, um, there are several uh, you know theories are there, we will just make it very brief uh, and somewhat simple. Let us take a, let us take a surface, let us take a surface. this is the passive film ok. The cathodic reaction and the anodic reactions they occur all through right. The cathodic reaction may be considered as here the, the you can have a cathodic reaction. Generally, for a stainless steel to passivate, the cathodic reaction has to be what? Has to be you put an acid, if you are going to be an acid, so cathodic reaction is generally the oxygen reduction reaction that only it makes the potential in the passive region, right? Otherwise, it won't make the you do not you do not render the metal passive you need to shift it to the passive region. So, the cathodic uh, the, 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 the cathodic current I mean sorry the, the, the cathodic reaction must have noble potential. So, all through you will have a metal dissolution and as well as the oxygen reduction reaction taking place like this. Now, if there is going to be a, a pit formed assume that there is a pit formed.
if the pit is covered by corrosion products passive film whatever can happen. Then it becomes an, an occluded cell What is an occluded cell? The occluded cell there is no no uh, convection there is only diffusion process right. So, it is only it is only a diffusion process here. Now, in the in the in the in the in the, in the pit the so called metastable pit assume that it is a metastable pit ok metastable pit. There is a pit form here, it is covered with some corrosion product or something. The metal continues to dissolve below this cover ok, here the metal dissolves continuously right. Okay. It dissolves continuously, it will it will generate various cations. For example, if you have a M go into solution as M n plus plus an electron, this becomes an anode. Now, the surrounding area becomes cathode and over here oxygen uh, content drops. Why does the oxygen content drops? Because it is covered with a with a corrosion product. Now, you have this metal ions generated here right and these metal ions when they are generated What happens now? You have now the generation of H plus ions. So, this is also going to promote chloride ion migration, chloride or maybe iodide or whatever you know, depending upon the anions present in the electrolyte and they can migrate to this and can form hydrochloric acid. It is somewhat similar to Krivais formation am I right? Somewhat similar to Krivais corrosion formation. Now, the question is when will the pit be stable? The pit will be stable if you form the acid right, pits become stable pitting uh, ok become stable if the pit is acidified. How does the acidification is occurs? This is possible if metal ions, the cations.
accumulate in the in the pit or in the metastable pit. or uprooted cells. I hope you understand now. See here you are not forming external crevice, we are you know the crevice itself is formed by the corrosion process. Now, in order that the metal to dissolve continuously, that pit the uprooted location has to be acidified and should maintain that acidity. Now, how, how is it possible? The acidity is possible is, is first of all created by it is created by the dissolution by, by the hydrolysis of the metal ions. Look at this the metal ions will interact with water hydrolyze and form metal hydroxide plus acid H plus and H plus in turn will attract more chlorides and form this one. Assume that this metal ions can easily migrate outside. I form a pit, you have metal ions, they just go out of the surface. What will happen? Here is the metal ion that is coming here, ok. Metal ions are formed here, right. Assume that these metal ions do not get accumulated, they just go away from the surface, get into the electrolyte. So, what will happen? Increase or decrease? decrease. Why will it decrease? No, you are right, pitting will not occur. Why is it not happening? No, what does the metal ions first of all do? If, if they stay here, what do they do? They form ions, right? They form hydrogen ions, they hydrolyze. If these ions are quickly moving away from the surface, what will happen to acid formation? The acid formation reduces, the chloride ion migration also reduces, and so the pit becomes unstable. Okay. So, if Mn plus migrate. faster the pit becomes unstable or I put other way around you need. So, or, or, or to say accumulation cations are needed. If they are not accumulated, they are washed away from the surface, no, the pitting will not be stable, that surface becomes again passive. Now, let us look at this. I made this little bit longer, this is the or length of the pit or is the pit length. Now, please look at here the metal resolution occurs the electrons will travel here and they may combine with uh, with oxygen and you can form hydroxide electrons also can travel here combine with oxygen here and you can and uh, it can form hydroxide water whatever it can form. So, you have an anode here and here you are going to have a cathode. I think most of you are engineers now right I am going to put a question to you. I want more cations to be here, 
because when you have more cations it will hydrolyze and form acid. It also can lead to migration of chloride ions in the into the pit. Now, what what makes now look at there are two processes one is the dissolution of metal ions giving rise to this and so what is the other process? The other process of the other process is the migration of these ions from the pit to the outside the pit. So, now you tell me what are the governing factors that will make the pit stable? Of course, gravity is one thing ok. Assume that gravity is there ok, every gravity is going to be everywhere now. What are the other factors in terms of pit dimension? Other one? Depth of the pit. The length of the pit and the rate of dissolution right. So, the product length of the this one and I the dissolution current is is a parameter used to describe the pit stability. Please look at they are multiplied if R is higher I can have a lower current density why because diffusion path is longer. If the diffusion path is shorter then I must have a higher dissolution rate in order to make the pit stable right. So, the pit stability this is the criteria used ok by a great guy called Galvele. So, this is a uh, one of the important criteria in deciding the in deciding the um, uh, uh, whether the, the pit formed in a metal will happen or not ok. Um, so, uh, I, I think I will not get into too much of things beyond this particular point actually ok. Um, only one thing I want to make a mention that I think is, is important that probably you like to know and then we move on to the respect of that. Now, there are various uh, metallic cations let us say aluminum iron 2 plus 3 plus whatever you may have let us say chromium. So, very interestingly that each cations they produce different pH. That is decided by their they are decided by the, the K value. Okay, for example, the AL3 plus Okay, right? A for that we decide what can be the pH. So, then may have those ions use acid. Anyway, let us not worry too much. Okay. So, the criteria of beginning is so to, uh, to summarize uh, what we have seen so far. Pitting occurs
in passive metals. Film breakdown and localized corrosion causes pitting, right. Now, um, you have a criteria called metastable pitting, which can occur even below the pit, right, can occur even below the pit. Pit stability depends on what? Depends on the pit chemistry. Right? The pit chemistry is uh, not promoting, is not good enough uh, than pitting will not occur right. So, the pit stability depends upon the pit chemistry and pit chemistry in turn depends on what? Pit chemistry depends upon depends upon the diffusion parameters. which means cation accumulation right. Which is defined by the criteria called R into I. So, please go through this I mean um, ok and uh, we can discuss this 